sometimes woodworking sucks, but today is a real low point for sure. Okay, with my lines marked out, I drilled a couple through holes to allow the jigsaw blade to get started here. So now it's time to carefully cut these out. Sometimes woodworking sucks. I'm in a spot where I feel like I just can't win with this Hans Wenger folding chair. The progress has been slow and difficult and that's partly because I chose such a difficult project which required a bunch of skills that I had to learn while doing the project. But today is a real low point for sure. I'm in the process of cutting the slots for the handle and, and these two things will be the slots to accept the weave and then there needs to be a channel about I don't know 20 millimeters deep to accommodate the, the folding mechanism but it's just not going well I really butchered this thing on the jigsaw and I really butchered this line on the jigsaw part of the problem is this is hardwood, it's, it's birch, yellow birch, and it's pretty hard. It's also thick, it's 32 millimeters thick. So that's you know about an inch and a half, and that's really pushing the limits of uh, what a jigsaw can do. And I just fought the thing the whole time, uh, trying to keep it on track, and uh, lost the battle. Then I thought I would come in and say, okay, I'm going to use my center punch and just punch a line of holes here in the line for this slot and then I'll just drill them. I'll take a really fine drill bit and drill them. And that was a rookie mistake because even though this line looks perfectly straight and beautiful, look at that. The, the drill bit was just too thin it would not stay on track through this hardwood. It followed the grain of the hardwood and wandered off into anywhere it wanted to. And I knew that would happen. Why did I do that? I'm, I'm losing focus on this project. I'm a firm believer that in order to be a happy human being, you have to keep your emotional side and your logical side in balance. And right now, I could tell I'm out of balance. I could tell the emotions are just at this peak over this project. So that means I got to bring in some logic. One of the ways I've learned to do that in these situations, not just in worried working, but in life in general, is to take a step back and count my blessings. 
And I don't know, maybe I'm just a lucky guy, but when I do that, I find that my blessings generally far outweigh my burdens. So blessing number one that I need to keep in mind is that there is a good side here and there is a bad side. This side is way worse than this side. So everything I've done so far is symmetrical. I can switch and take these markings and put them over here so I could put all of this carnage on the inside. It's not too late. Another blessing I need to keep in mind here is that this is the first of four pieces like this. I'm building two chairs. There's two parts like this each. So I do have three more opportunities to improve upon this. And another blessing is I have access to just an excellent drill press. I think I might be able to straighten out these holes a little bit, at least from this side. I was using this 1 16th inch drill bit and I was hesitant to use it in the drill press because it's so thin. In my experience, um, the power of a, a drill press is just too much for a thin bit like this. That's why I was using a hand drill. But I've gone ahead and just accepted the fact that these slots are going to be a little wider than design. Gone ahead and put in an eighth inch drill bit. This one uh, still will have the ability to flex, but not as much as this one, and it should be okay to use it here in the drill press. And for the rest of the parts, I can drill out most of the waste with the drill press, make sure everything's nice and square. And then from there, it's just cleaning up which is a process that should make this look a lot better. And yet another blessing is God did leave me with a couple of problem solving skills. Uh, so here's an example of something I made based off of a, a DIY post on the internet. Uh, what I have here is a sanding strip that I'm going to use in my jigsaw. And what it is is just a couple of cotter pins bent into these hooks. And I've folded over a scrap of cloth-backed uh, sandpaper, cut the size to match the cotter pins. And once this is mounted in the jigsaw, I should be able to feed this through like a jigsaw blade. And I should be able to use the power tool to level out this carnage here. Um, I think that'll work. That'll also help me get a better shape here. And so I'm always thankful that I can rely on a little bit of uh, deep thinking to come up with something to improve my situation. I should mention that Ashwin sells sanding strips like this, but if you look at the photo, it has this big knob here that grips onto the sandpaper. It's, it's like a big cylinder. And I think it's way too big to feed through here, but with this little flat wire design, it will fit through. So maybe now I can quit feeling sorry for myself and just get this project back on track. This is the main voyage, so to speak, for this system. Um, it could be that the wire in the cotter pin is too skinny it, maybe it just doesn't have enough strength to hold up to the tension of the system. If that's the case, um, I think I'll go tomorrow morning and buy a larger size cotter pen. But first, there's no harm in seeing if this works. Okay, so I think there is hope for the system. Um, yeah, my wire's a little too thin. It can't take the tension. It did sand. Maybe you can see how deformed that spring is there. So it was working, and I really think that might be my only option for improving this slot is with something like this. I should mention that I have this collection of files that... Uh, came with my used jigsaw here, but I think they're all too thick to fit in the slot. Well, these are knife edge. No, 
Yeah, I'm just, I just think it's going to get jammed in the thinner parts here, even though it, it fits in some of the thicker parts. Uh, I, I just don't want to risk it. It could do more damage to the workpiece uh, than help it. I, I also did check my collection of uh, hand files, and all of them are too thick to fit in that slot. Okay, I just <laughs> remembered one more option. I, I have this little uh, modular needle file set, and uh, any one of these would fit. This one's a really good candidate, as well as this one. I guess some of you are saying, well, why don't I just mount that in the bottom chuck and use it as a, as a die filer like the other ones? The answer is, is that this shaft is too long. The cutting part of the file starts here. I wouldn't be cutting the whole piece uh, through the whole stroke. If I wanted to sacrifice this, I guess I could cut that off right there but I really don't want to sacrifice it. Uh, so I think the file is just too fine. All of these files are very fine. Um, they're not for bulk removal of large amount of the material, which is, is what I need to do here. Hopefully you can see how deformed these cutter pins are after using it for a while. Uh, those are just not going to hold up. I did go to Menards and I looked for a 10 gauge steel wire. I couldn't find it. But what I did find were these 3 16 by one inch cutter pins. It's at least four times as thick. So now I need to form these into a shape that is similar to what I already had. Okay, there's the old version. There's the new version. I do hope it lasts a little bit longer. I may have to trim the length of the end here to fit the jigsaw, but we'll see. Okay, this seems to be working. The hooks are holding up. I could put good spring pressure on the upper arm here. And I've already switched around to the other side. I think I've got this side of the slot decent, at least a lot better than it was. So that makes me happy. So I'm really close to getting the project back on track. Here you can see some examples of the work pieces at three different stages. This is that first terrible piece that I showed earlier in the video. Actually it's looking a lot better. It's not too terrible. I have some holes marked here and here which lay out the mortises for the joinery for the rails. And I've used a chisel to pare down the peaks of the Forstner bit holes and I've made a little dowel here, which will be the size of the piece that runs in the slot. And so 
I can test it, make sure I'm working it down to the right size. Here's a piece that I haven't touched yet, but you can see it's ready for me to start pairing it. And this is the work piece I'm working on. And pairing work like that obviously requires a sharp chisel, uh, so I keep the strop handy, which is really nice. So I can tune up as I go. Stopping and stropping takes a little extra time, but actually saves time in the long run. So that edge is going to be ready to go for a little more work. And I'll stop and strop as much as I need to. When I get as far as I can with a chisel, I use this tool. This is a tool I made from 60 grit sandpaper and one of these tongue depressor sized paint stirrers. I buy these for less than $2 for a pack of 30 at my local Menards. This is nice and flexible, so when I'm ready, I can come in here and fare out the joint even more with the sandpaper. And when this grit wears out, I can make another one. It's pretty cheap. Okay everyone, I think I'm going to end it there. This is getting to be a pretty long video already. And if you stuck with me through this point, I really do thank you. I appreciate it very much. I'm going to go get back to work and I will share with you another project update in the next video. Bye.